It is game 29 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our friends who always say, everything's coming up Millhouse. The amazing folks over at Zappos. The Nanners cruise to a 5-1 to one victory last night here in Isotopes Park. And on this beautiful Sunday here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, they look to sweep the land of enchantment. Here is how their defense is aligned in our second and final game of this mini series. From left to right in the outfield, it is Robert Anthony Cruz, Reese Alexiades, and Danny Hosley. Third to first in the infield, you see Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Brandon Crosby. Behind the dish, it is Bill Leroy, and on the mound is Ryan Kella. The Bananas and Party Animals had 19 trick plays last night, but between these two teams, they have recorded 301 trick plays this season. And last night, Ryan Cox had 52 trick plays. Now he is at 58. Six trick plays last night for Coxie, the most by one player in a single game, which tied the record. And meanwhile, DR Meadows, not in today's starting lineup, reselects the Otis's Manning center field. We've seen Alexiotis play all three outfield positions. He's got a trick play in left this season, a couple in right field. Can he get his seventh trick play, Manning center field today for the Bananas? Let's get a closer look at the six foot six lefty on the mound for the Nanners. It is Ryan Kellogg, who hails from Whitby, Canada, but he is no stranger to the southwest of the United States. Spent three years at Arizona State over in Phoenix, calls the Phoenix area home these days when he is not in banana land. And you take a look at his numbers across the tour. He is a professional pitcher in every definition of the name. But the party animals have had a good amount of success across this young tour. Yeah, last time out for Ryan Kellogg, he did take the loss. He has one win and two losses this season. He is making start number nine for the Bananas and gave up ten hits to the party animals in his last start. Bryson Bloomer collecting two home runs against Ryan Kellogg. And really, the difference is just keeping pitches over just the middle of the zone for him this season. Last year, the party animals batted 264 against Ryan Kellogg. This season, they are batting 362 against him. It is quite the jump we've seen. They've adapted to Ryan Kellogg's repertoire on the mound. Hopefully, he can keep the ball on the ground. That's going to be very important if the ball is flying out of this yard today. We look at the party animals lineup now. It is Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder, at the top for the 29th time in 29 games this year. Bryson Bloomer behind him, and then Jake Skull in the three hole. Dalton Cornett cleaning it up. Then Chase Acuff, Tanner Thomas, Noah Fisher in the middle. Dustin Baber, Bronson Ballholm, and Jason Swan, the bottom three, as we will send this thing down to Jesse Cole to get the folks fired up for today's game. Fans, it's time. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Those three magic words have been screamed out into the skies here in Albuquerque. And the party animals all taking part in Reese Hampton's now legendary walk-up dance. Third year of banana ball for the Charlotte, North Carolina kid. Went one for four with a run driven in and an RBI. Let off last night's ball game with a line drive base knock. 2-0, chance for the fans. Not caught. Hampton spent three years at UNC Charlotte, and drafted by the Detroit Tigers in the 2018 Major League Baseball draft. Alexiades tapping it up to himself. Will grab it and flourish his sixth trick play of the year, make it number seven with a cartwheel. And that is exactly what we were talking about from Alexiades. We know this guy can play all three outfield positions, and now he's got a trick play at each of them this season. Again, he just shows so much creativity with what he does in the outfield on these trick plays, and Ryan Kellogg's got to be happy with getting that first out against Reese Hampton. Ryan Kellogg not happy that he didn't get a strike call on the first offering to Brayson Bloomer. Grayson Wheeler is our home plate umpire tonight. First time this year that Vincent Chapman is not behind the dish. He is umpiring at first as Danny Hosley takes care of that high pop off the bat of the Animals third baseman. Good start for Kellogg. 
two quick outs, and now the man who spent seven years in the Chicago Cubs minor league system sets his sights on another man with seven years of minor league baseball experience. Jake Skull split it with five in the Rangers farm system, two years as a New York Yankees minor leaguer. Just a minute and a half into this inning, and Ryan Kellogg's induced two quick fly ball outs. And what's important, again, we said he wanted to keep the ball on the ground, but at least these fly balls we're seeing, especially the last one for Bryson Bloomer, weak contact off the bat. Skull had a nice night, one for three. A ball for a sprint, a run scored, an RBI. He's up to 31 in each of those departments. Well ahead of everybody else in Banana Land when it comes to runs scored and RBIs. His 17 extra base hits also pacing the tour. He's tied for the season lead with his four homers and three triples as well as his 10 doubles. And yet he is also still maintaining what is a current banana ball record 33 straight games of reaching base safely for the animals. And I'm sorry, he stands alone with his three triples. D.R. Meadows has a pair. Count full. Do not let our score bug distract you. That thing is living in the past. It's as close to a foul ball opportunity as we've gotten up here on the fourth deck here in Isotopes Park. That was actually an opportunity for Shark to possibly catch the foul ball for an out there. Another payoff pitch. Kellogg wins the battle. Goes right after Skull. And picks up a K. One, two, three inning for the Nanners' big southpaw. Done in just three minutes and three seconds for Ryan Kellogg. And pretty overall pitch efficient as well. Just 14 pitches needed for Kellogg to get out of the first. And you see the celebration with that <laughs> strikeout. Throwing away the glove. Take a look at the Bananas defensive alignment. Check that. The Party Animals defensive alignment. No, we don't have any graphics. Let's just take a look at the world's slowest race. Oh, there it is. Better late than never. You don't get to see the babies for a second. For now, you look at the boys in pink. Left to right in the outfield. It is Noah Fisher, then Hampton and Skull. Third to first in the infield. Bloomer, then Chase Acuff, Justin Baber, and Jason Swan. Behind the dish, it is Bronson Ballholm and towing the slab, Garrett Delano. Party Animals had six trick plays last night, and each member of the starting infield today had a trick play last night for the Animals. Bryson Bloomer leading the Party Animals with a hat trick of trick plays last night. Meanwhile, Noah Fisher draws another start in left field, still without a trick play in left, but he would like to get one today. And it's just one of those moves by Mike Vivasis to keep some of his other guys fresh. And Tanner Thomas starting as the extra hitter today. And last time Tanner got the day off in the field, he had a three-hit game as the extra hitter. Okay, control room, we've got to check in on the babies. We've finally got some movement. Nobody was going anywhere until this young superstar decided to pump this thing into hyperspeed. Now we do have a toddler making some headway behind her, but it is going to be a runaway landslide victory, reaching through the finish line, crawling over it. Sweet, sweet victory for that young tyke as we look, at, we look now at the numbers for Garrett Delano in his third world tour for the Party Animals, he's been stupendous. Yeah, and the last time out earned his second win of the 2024 world tour. And remember, last season he didn't record a single win across the entire 2023 tour. Garrett Delano with a 183 ERA plus this season. That means he's been 83% better than the tour average pitcher. And he's looking to continue his dominance out here on the mound today as he starts out with a quick 0-2 count on Gabe Howell leading off today for the Bananas. This one hit a mile high. Good distance, but not far enough to escape the mitt of Reese Hampton in center. So three pitches, one out for Delano, who loves to pound the zone. Excellent five-pitch mix, three fastballs, four-seam, two-seam, and a cutter. And then he will spin a curveball and slow things down with a changeup as well. Guy who spent four years at Brown University, finished up with his final season of college at Mercer. A 2018 collegiate banana when he was teammates with this man, Bill Leroy. The two of them, it was their rookie campaigns as bananas. Now this is year seven for Leroy. 
in the fourth season of baseball or banana ball in Savannah for Delano as Chase Haycuff goes between the legs. Nice stretch by Swan across the diamond. No! What is Vincent? Okay, Vincent Chapman flapping his arms in what looked like it could have been a safe call, but no, he, he said that was an out call. It's, it's an emphatic out call for Vincent Chapman, and I believe he was doing the sketch kind of celebration out call, if you will. What's up, brother? Right, that was confusing for me, but I think you're spot on. Trick play number 39 for Aka. He only trails Baber and Cox in trick plays. Delano, after Kellogg worked a 1-2-3 top of the first, trying to do the same in the bottom half. He has to get through Reese Alexiatis. 2-0 count after a close call does not go his way. And that ball hit well. Left center field, Hampton in pursuit and right in front of the 428-foot sign. That one is hauled in. Bizarre dimensions here in Isotopes Park. 400 to straightaway center, 428 to left and right center. And Alexiades, who blasted a league-leading 29 home runs in the Pioneer League last year, part of his MVP campaign, just hits it to the wrong part of Rio Grande Credit Union Field here in Isotopes Park as we welcome in Bananas second baseman Jackson Olsen to the broadcast. How are you doing today, Jackie? What's up, boys? Oh, man. It seems like it is a beautiful day for banana ball down there. Oh, it is so nice out right now. Yesterday was a little cold, but um, my northeast jeans kind of helped me out there. Jackson, is this your first ever foray into the state of New Mexico? Um, I actually, so when I moved to California two years ago, my dad and I took the 44-hour drive and we stopped in New Mexico. So we literally stopped for like, I think like a quesadilla or something. <laughs> but So this is really my second time, yeah. That'll play. Okay, it's going to be four, five, six for the party animals. Six up, six down so far between Kellogg and Delano. And Jackie, you're as big of a Swifty, I think, as anybody this side of the Mississippi River. <laughs> and Taylor Swift just released a brand new double album yesterday. Uh, have you gotten to listen to it yet? So I've gotten to listen to about eight of them all the way through. I feel like I have to enjoy them more, so I can't just like, listen to it pregame. Um, but yeah, I love it so far. Okay, terrific. Yeah, you're a guy who, who really sits there and listens and thinks about the lyrics as Dalton Cornett gets into the box and sends this one a mile high into foul territory. Catch it. Nope. Not caught. Uh, I would like to run through some of the lyrics on Tortured Poets. Society? Department. Department. Gosh, son of a gun. I would like to run through some of the lyrics on the old to Tortured Poets Department album here. Let's and, do it. And just see what you think, and, and maybe you could translate them. Okay, I'll from, try my best. From Taylor's language into what she's trying to tell all of us. So, uh, to kick things off, as Cornette sends Cornette. this the opposite way, and Rack will call off Cox and Battling the Sun. Grabs that one for out number one. Okay, ready, Jackie? And I sound like an infant, feeling like the very last drops of an ink pen. A greater woman stays cool, but I howl like a wolf <laughs> at the moon. Oh, shout out Gabe Howell. Um, okay, this one? Yes. This is very uh, reputation-coded for all my Swifties that are listening in. Um, she's, I think it really means that she's a... Oh, that ball's gone. Chase yeah. Acuff, look out! Souvenir City! Nearly sends it off the Jumbotron. Three homers on the tour for the Banana Ball sophomore. Had zero home runs across 68 games played last season for the Party Animals. Now collects home run number three, and that one a no-doubter off the bat. You see the Party Animals fired up right along with Chase Acuff, and that is a big swing for the Animals, who did not have many last night, and hopefully they'll be able to ride his momentum. And Jackson, we just got the replay of your reaction. <laughs> you knew it instantly. I knew it instantly. <laughs> oh, this is sick. Tanner Thomas. Are we, are we going to continue, or are we going to oh, watch Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep on going. Uh, we're going to tune in to the Jumbotron that Chase Acuff nearly just put a hole in. Because Tanner Thomas, now this is High School Musical, right? This is High School Musical. He is Troy. And it was uh, filmed in Utah, but set here in Albuquerque. I did not know that. I did not know that either until you just said it. 
who I am. Oh, you you know this tune? Uh, a little bit of it, yeah. <laughs> bet on it, bet on it, bet on it, bet on it. I mean, I'm always going to be betting on Tanner Tinder Thomas. Now the real question is, over 13,000 fans on, on hand here, captivated by the live music video, is where will Tanner be coming from? I know where he's coming from, but it'll I'll make it we'll make it a surprise. Okay, yeah, I've Oh, look at this little barrel action into the water. Barrel <laughs> the bat. The acting job, this should be sent to the Oscars community. I agree. Do they care about music videos? I guess the Grammys is probably a Yeah, best music video. Yeah, they'd be more receptive to this kind of piece of content. Boy, how has Dalton Malden not included Tanner in more music videos? I agree. This is this is very good. The artistry of the shot into the water. I love how the outfielders are just. I don't know if you can zoom in on the outfielders right now, but they're all just like watching a movie. They're sitting down. Yeah, Rack, Reese, and Hosley all just casually. I mean, here he comes. They're all lying down. Look like they want to be painted like one of our French women. Bet on it. Bet on it. Bet on it, girl. Bet on it. And the music video turns into real life. This is a long run to make it in before his AB here. I mean, he's jumping. He's got to be gassed. <laughs> that was awesome. I just got goosebumps. Oh, my gosh. The folks here loved it. Bill Leroy passed out. Literally passed out. I just got straight up goosebumps. I, yeah, I see a couple... Uh ladies in the front rows of these stands who have instantly fainted because of Tanner <laughs> Thomas. Yep. Yeah, Bill Leroy. Uh, me, being, me being included. All right, well, here is the Party Animals extra hitter. And he's ahead one ball and no strikes. We will keep running through tortured poets department lyrics here with Mr. Jackson Olsen so we can figure this one out. Uh, here's the next one, Jack, is the 1-1 one -one is fouled off. You know how to ball. I know Aristotle. <laughs> Brand new, full throttle. Touch me while your bros play Grand Theft Auto. This, okay, so this is actually really funny. Um, I asked all my teammates before the game who they thought this was written by. They all either said Drake or Kanye. Or, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? No, it's actually by girl. And they're like Taylor Swift. And I'm like, yeah, she's kind of a badass. <laughs> so I don't really have a uh, decoding of this, but yeah. yeah. Just uh, pretty different from her. That's just angry, Taylor. Angry Taylor. It's a diary. This whole album's a diary. It's a, I mean, for, my, for the Swifties, I don't know if you guys know who Joe Allen is. But no, I, is. Do, I do not know who that guy okay, is. Okay, well, one of her exes. Right. Um, and, yeah, it's kind of a lot about him. This one poked the other way from Fisher. Hosley grabs it oh. behind the back. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Jackie, as you head to the dugout, can you run through a couple other lyrics with us here real yes, quick? let's do it. Uh, I think that last one honestly could be about Travis Kelsey. It could. It was kind of like, kind of feels like she's hanging out with a jock and she's liking it. Uh, but that's just my interpretation. I, honestly, I think I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. I like that. Thank you. Uh, now we've got whether I'm going to be your wife or going to smash up your bike. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to get you back. I think this is about Joe Alwyn. Okay, um, here we go. I think this is definitely about about Joe. So. Um, I don't think their relationship ended great. Yeah. So I feel like that's probably why those lyrics are said the way they are. And right. That, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's deep. Whether it's going to be your wife or smash up your bike, either way, revenge is on the mind. Uh, okay. How about all my mornings are Mondays stuck in an endless February? I look in the miracle move on drug. No, I took the miracle move on drug. The effects were temporary. Wait, hold on. Can we, uh, Sorry, ready? Marry me, Juliet, you'll never have to be alone. I love you, and that's all I really know. To dad, go pick out a white dress. You guys know the lyrics. It's a love story. Baby, just say yes. yes. You just got to nail the ending. That's, that's what I always oh. told. Oh, man. What do you think those lyrics mean, Jackie? <laughs> the, the ones that we just sang? <laughs> Correct. This was a precursor to uh, Travis Kelsey. Maybe just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually about to hit in two batters, so 
Do we want to continue it or do we want to do we want to end it? Well, listen, that that's really up to you. Do you want to be locked in, tapped in for your AB here, so you don't have to be thinking about Taylor lyrics the entire time? Yes, I yeah. want to be locked in, okay. tapped in. Uh, that sounds great. <laughs> you're you're the hottest man in the world right now. We'd like to keep it that way. Jackson Olson, thank you so Let's much go. for joining us. See you, boys. Thank you. Have fun, Jackson. Thank you, guys. There goes Jackson Olson, a resident Taylor Swift expert, trying to break inside the mind of our greatest superstar these days. As this one tapped the other way by Dan Oberst, flipped to Delano, and Garrett wins the battle against his jujitsu sparring partner. Four batters faced, four retired for Big G. He's looking up, asking for a trick play. What is how? To, I didn't even see what could possibly be presumed a trick play there. Uh, he grabbed the feed from Jason Swan barehanded. Yeah, no, that, that just feels like a baseball play. He wants us to count it. I'll, I'll, I'll lie to him just to make him feel better now. <laughs> yeah, you're up to seven, Garrett. <laughs> how about this for an entrance? We've got flamenco dancers coming out on the field with Eric Jones Jr., the extra hitter for the Nanners, due to swing it. And he's going to break out his best flamenco as well. Well, you know what they say. The E in Eric Jones Jr. stands for flamenco. <laughs> I have heard that. Well, EJ pulls off some just phenomenal dance moves. How about, why well, have one flamenco partner when you can have four? Uh, we have to shout out Cassie in the chat for giving away not one, not two, not three, but 30 gift memberships so far. That is Banana Land generosity at its best. Spin. Spin. There you go. Now we'll spin you back. We'll spin you back around. Yeah, there you go. You were great. Thank you. We, I got some. I got to work on that a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. I only took one semester of ballroom dance. Lori would appreciate it if I came back with some flamenco skills. We didn't touch the flamenco very much, just salsa. So it was an entire class on salsa dancing. No, but we did. Oh. We did many different styles. We I see. really the closest I feel like we probably got to flamenco was salsa. Okay, that plays. Yes. I feel like you've retained those skills here and there. Yeah. Oh, one here on the Nanners EH. Check that. Oh, and two make it oh, and three. And strikeout number one on the day for Delano. And hasn't thrown more than three pitches to a single batter yet. Garrett Delano just continuing to make quick work of bananas batters to start this day game. Got the pride of Charlotte, North Carolina to leave the strike zone there. And now juiceful Jackson Olsen with a freshly removed broadcast microphone steps in and takes the cutter inside. Olsen one for three with an RBI in his sixth walk off of the tour last night. Pops this one up on the infield. Acuff trotting in, takes control. And has out number three. The party animals win the second inning thanks to the Chase Acuff home run and Delano's second straight one, two, three inning of the day. The animals lead one to nothing in the all important points department. And we will send it down to Maceo Harrison with the fellas from both sides to dance us to the third frame.
job by Maceo Harrison with Lealios, Pomps, Porter, and Helton representing the party animals and for the Nanners, the invader with the Noahs, Nisnik and Bridges. Now, what do we have to do if, if we get to include ourselves in another player dance this yes. year? What do we have to do to, to twerk on the field with the guys like that? I think we have to learn how to twerk. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Huh. My I'm back, taking you for that. I think my back is too stiff. Normally, uh, one of the signatures of my dancing abilities is Dustin Baber picks himself up a sword on the first pitch he sees this afternoon. And can't connect on another bender there from Kellogg. Animal's second baseman. Quickly behind Owen, two, make it three benders, three strikes. As Kellogg has his third punch out of the day. And you could see Bill Leroy behind home plate immediately jump up from his catcher's position in celebration after the strikeout there of Dustin Baber, who almost looked like he knew another curveball was coming out of the hand of Ryan Kellogg and was just out in front of all three of those very slow benders from the big left day. Yeah, three straight Uncle Charlie starts out Bronson ball home with the same thing, and now in center field, Jackson Olsen will call off Cox and Alexiades and grab out number two uh, just to put a bow on the dancing discussion. Normally, I'm, I'm pretty much loosey-goosey all over the place. My dancing style is dominated by hips and shoulders, but the lower back just, it doesn't move. I'm usually moving my knees when I'm twerking, and those are supposed to be locked in place, it, it seems. This would poke the opposite way from Jason Swan. Not caught by the fans. To the 10 hole we go. Ryan Kellogg has retired eight of the nine party animals he's faced. The only man to get aboard was Chase Acuff with the solo home run. Look out, Swanee. Jason comes in hitting 363, leading the bad boys in Banana Land in batting average. Just an insane weapon to have in your 10 hole as he fouls off the backdoor slider. And really the only reason the party animals bat Jason Swan 10 is because just 13% of his total hits have gone for extra bases this season. A little more of a singles hitter and an on-base hitter for these guys. And really, again, trying to feed the top half of the order and come around and score and be driven in by the likes of Reese Hampton and Jake Skoll. Hits this one on the ground. Cox charges, goes between the legs, and the throw in time to beat a sliding Jason Swan into first base. Ryan Cox with trick play number 59 on this year's world tour and gets Ryan Kellogg a 1-2-3 third inning. You get another look at it there as Swanee belly flops into first. Trying to beat the rap. Second 1-2-3 inning of the day for Kellogg. Let's get it to Jesse Cole for the Wet Your Pants Relay Race. Hooger Hughes family versus the Herring family. They're going to have to run to each base, throw water balloons at the pants region of their family and get all the way back with the wife getting a bucket of water, throwing it at the pants region to see who's going to be the winner and who's got the wettest pants here in the family. Yep, we're just making things up here. All right, family's ready. Heron family ready. Hooker Hughes family ready. On your mark, get set, go. Let's wet those pants. Here we go. He's already losing one. And all right, there we go. And here go the kids. The balloons are exploding. Oh, all right. Now coming to mom. Here we go. Oh, she got soaked. Missed. The mom has got missed. And here it is. Oh, I think the Heron family just barely with the big win. Let's hear it for the Heron family. They definitely know how to wet their pants. Fascinating promotion there as we go to the bottom of the third. Garrett Delano faced six bananas, retired all six, picked up a strikeout. Two ground outs, a pop out, two fly outs. And hands the ball off to Garrett DeClue, who has had some fantastic outings and has had some not-so-fantastic outings. Last weekend in Durham was the latter. Yeah, just a lack of control for Garrett DeClue, and that's when you see him have those bad outings is because he can't necessarily find the strike zone. Entered with a five-run cushion, and 
the Bananas ended up tacking on six runs against him and actually walking off the inning that led to a win in the finale in Durham to avoid a sweep of the, from the party animals. It was a trick play missed in there to start the inning, so it was not all on DeClue. His defense left the door ajar, and the Bananas kicked it in. So it's going to be 7-8-9. Danny Hosley trying to be the first nander to reach base today. We're having some trouble with our scoreboard. That's why you're not seeing the balls and strikes ever updated. So we'll try and do a better job of keeping you locked in and tapped in on the count from an audio perspective. It's 3-0 here to Hosley. That one, bottom of the zone. He took one step out of the box, but able to drag that left foot. So it was not considered an attempt at a steal of first. He'll get a 3-1 offering. There is the sprint. Five pitches from DeClue, four of them out of the zone. The ball got away from ball home, so Hosley will trot into second and hustle back to the bag. Content with the two-base sprint. Remember when ball four is fired in banana ball, all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the banana ball before it is live. And with the bobble there from Bronson Ballholm behind the dish, Danny Hosley knew he'd have two bases easily. Thought about third for a second, but a good job by Chase Haycup going over to cover third base and keep Danny Hosley from getting just 90 feet away from scoring. Zach Phillips clearing the way for Brandon Crosby. Well, I'm sure many times in life has experienced this problem. Trying to focus on a special lady, but the ladies are in there wall to wall. All trying to get a piece of showtime. I'm sure you've had that problem too, Josh. Never. <laughs> you bring up a sore subject. Osley takes off for 30, stole that one on to Clue. Tremendous jump for the Nanners right fielder. And the inning winning run 90 feet away with no outs. Party animals have to bring the infield in. Yeah, ball home behind the dish, not expecting Hosley to take off and pick. A good time to do it right after a signature walk-up. And here, this one chopped in front of the mound. And Brandon Crosby, we know that he has pretty elite speed on this Bananas team, is able to beat out a weak chopper for an infield single. DeClue looked Hosley back to third base. And that moment right there was all it took for the pride of Mechanicsville, Virginia, to beat the Rap over at first. So still no outs. And now Rack into the box. Robert Anthony Cruz, the left fielder. Crosby takes off for second. Paul Holm will throw it down, but Acuff in front of the bag. In no position to apply a tag. Ball wasn't going to beat Showtime anyhow, so... Crosby grabs his third banana ball steal. Yeah, surprise ball home even threw down there. It was kind of an attempt by the Bananas to possibly try the double steal there, but now Rack blasts this one out to the opposite field, and that one will hit off the roof of the pavilion in left field. Robert Anthony Cruz with an opposite field missile, and the Bananas get a three-run homer and their first walk-off of the day. Just like that, we're knotted at a point of peace. A backhand spring from Cruz with the landing spot perfectly placed on home plate. How about the Apotaka? Opposite field power, and that thing was a mile gone. Again, this is exactly what we talked about on the pre-show in this ball game. The ball flying so far out of Isotopes Park. We welcome in the new man on the mound for the Nanners, Andy Archer with the mic on him. Andy, how's your day going, buddy? Hey, man. Can you guys hear me okay? We've got you loud and clear, my friend. Hey, where are you guys? We are dead central. I'm waving oh, yeah. my hands. <laughs> Hi, guys. We're up high. Uh, so I, I was, I was, uh, I got, I, I got something for you. What do you have? Well, you know, God willing, I'll strike somebody out today. And I have a new uh, strikeout celebration. 
That is thrilling. Not to replace my signature, but I think just to add on to it, I think is the best way I can say it. Now, I don't, I don't want you to give it away right away, but, but are there any hints you can give us per chance? Yeah, and I, I'll give you a hint. I think if you follow me on social media, it's my favorite dance. All right. Huh. That narrows it down. Andy, well, we've oh, got yeah. a mic on you here. We would like to do a little draft with you. We're trying to figure out who the best people on the Savannah Bananas to bring into the Hunger Games would be. Ooh. We'll let you have the first overall pick. Me? Yes. Oh, man. Okay, well. What teammate would you want with you when you land on the cornucopia? Do I? Am I guaranteed that they will not betray me? No. Okay. <laughs> ah. Sorry. I'm good. I think, honestly, I'm going to go Dan Oberst. Yeah, that was the obvious pick. I'm going to yeah. go Dan Oberst. Yeah, it was. He looks really cool right now. I'll say that, too. Level-headed jiu-jitsu master. Jiu -jitsu, yeah, I mean, handsome. Cool. Big boy. Yeah, great hang. Intimidating. That completely makes sense. Okay, yeah. Josh, you can have the second pick. This one might surprise right. people based on our broadcast from last night. But I'm going to take... Your catcher, Mr. Archer. I'm going to take really? Bill Arroyo. He is an avid outdoorsman, and uh, I trust any man who can screech like a night Oh, yeah, Cox. Take him. Boo! Woo! <laughs> 360 between nice the legs. Nice play. Great play. Everybody, good job. Second trick play of the day for Cox. The great scoop hey. by Crosby at the other side. And he has reached 60 trick plays already on this 2024 World Tour. He's at an otherworldly pace on pace to right. break his record from last season, by the way. Nice heater at the knees Whoa. as... Whoa. Okay. Oh, what? I don't know what's happening here. Oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I need to throw your arrow away. What's happening here? Okay, okay. Vincent Chapman that, stealing the show. I was about to do it, but here we are. Oh, yeah, okay, let's do it. I'm going to cover my eyes, though. Have you ever seen somebody in Milton, Georgia dance like <laughs> the pride of Texarkana, Texas? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Wow. <laughs> yep, and I don't condone that type of activity normally. <laughs> I really don't, but here we are, and it's America, and you know what? <laughs> We're just all in this thing together, baby. No doubt about that, and the full capacity crowd, as they always yep. do, they and love you know it. Back to business, I've thrown two pitches, two strikes, and I have an out. Cutter! Oh, give oh, it to me, Oh, that's a good spot. Good give it spot. To me. Yes. Ah. Woo-hoo! Way to jump uh -oh, back ahead. Two strikes, baby. What are you going with one and two here, Andy? I want to go heater. Yeah. Ah! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! I don't know what happened to my arrows. All right, uh, oh. yeah, they're falling all over the place. We got a bit of a mess. Yeah, you can just throw them behind the mound. That doesn't seem MPI, like a hazard MPI, at all. MPI, MPI, can't have it. Yeah. Ah. I Broke am speed. Back. In, in, in. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> we Willie Keeler, he hit it right where they ain't. Uh, I'll take a broken bat, that's fine. Yeah, no doubt about that. Okay, that'll give me a chance to get my third pick of the inaugural Savannah Bananas Hunger Games draft. I'm taking Jackson Olsen. Really? Yes. Wow. Because I'm betting that he come, he turns up in the cornucopia and there will be some Jackson Olsen <laughs> fans on hand and he can gather a really nice little hunting party just based on popularity alone. Whoa, got him leaning. Careful over there. All right, so Jackson's an interesting pick. So it's my turn? Correct. Okay. Are party animals available for this? Yeah, you can grab party animal. We called it the Savannah Bananas draft. Ah, strike. Yeah, but he's the talent, Ooh. you know. Uh, we just follow his lead, eh? Correct. Yeah. No, no, no. Reset, reset, reset. Okay, 2-0 count here on Jake's goal. What do you guys want? Give me some advice. I that? feel like uh, either cutter in or two-seamer. Little front door action. Okay. I like the ladder. Strike. That'll play. That'll play. That's a beaut. So I pick off. I think he wants to go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Remind Jordan who's saying that. You're checking on him. You gonna go for a quick pitch now? Ooh. Oh, check on oh. him again. Oh. Yeah. So should I do three? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'd like one more pickoff okay. attempt here. 
<laughs> wow! You, you did get him! Hey, hey, that's credit you! <laughs> Let's go! Andy, on the third pickoff attempt, nabs Hussein. Knew it. Hey, that's called playing chess, baby. All right, what's the count? One and two? Two and one. Two and one. Oh, I'm in the wind up here. Ah, strike. Oh, yeah. Attaboy. Going up the zone, baby. Did you just split change him? Two no, and no, one? that was a cutter. That was oh, a cutter. wow. It was just back door, and it was really, really, really where I wanted, where I wanted it. Okay, what's the move? Two, two. Oh, best pitch. Oh, check him. Woo! <laughs> Matt Garley says Skull didn't go, so we get a payoff. Give me a pass, though. No. Yes. Ah! Oh! Just a pinch down. I'm going to go cover third. Yep, heads up move by you, Andy. Oh, we got him. Nope. Okay, you've got a chance for your second pick in the Hunger Games draft yeah. here. I think I just want a quick quick out here. All right, fair enough. Oh, oh okay, wait. Um, you know what? Sleeper pick? Yes. Danny Hosley. Oh! Danny Hosley is my second pick. Resourceful, that's why. All right, now Dalton Cornette at the dish. Ugh. Strike. That is freaking paint, baby. Right at the knees. No. Oh, that's a good pitch. Good take, good take. That's an unbelievable take. Nope. Josh, reset, your reset. second pick. Uh, give me Reselexianus. I like I a that. Superman. I like a Superman on my squad. Ugh. Come on, fan. Come on, fan. 2-2 two, two count. That's going to be out of the ballpark, unfortunately. <laughs> Fans are scared of the ball up there. All right, 2-2. Two, two, man on second. Two outs. Back to the heat, Andy. Yes. Correct. It's on. Ah! Oh, somebody. Jam sandwich, Jackson Woo! Olsen under yeah, the leg. Jackie! Ah! Fight me! <laughs> and boy. my Good final play. pick will be Dalton Molden, the songbird of our generation. I'd like some music in the Hunger Games. Uh, Andy hey. Archer, thank you so much, hey, buddy. Hey, boys, listen, always a pleasure. I don't know if I'm mic'd up again, but love you guys. Thank you for the advice for the pickoff. God bless you. <laughs> You're love a you. stud, Andy. Love you guys, love you guys. Love you too, Andy. One day, that guy will bite us. Oh, he has bitten me. He has not he has bitten already me. bitten me. Wow. Multiple times. Wow. I've never been bit by Andy. Oh, I've been bit. A lot of people here in Banana Land have been bit by Mr. Archer. Word on the street is it's a showing of affection. I guess that's what they do up in the Atlanta area when they really like somebody. Not what I was doing. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're knotted at one point apiece. Bananas will just need one run in the bottom of the fourth to take their first lead of the day. It's going to be the bottom of the order, trying to feed the top. Ryan Cox in the 10 hole, and then Gabe Howell and Bill Leroy, numbers one and two in the order. Right now, the 316th straight sold out. Bananas are party animals crowd. All hay baby. Over 13,000 folks on hand here at Rio Grande Credit Union Field here at Isotopes Park. Third largest venue in banana ball history, only trailing Victory Field with over 15,000 in Indianapolis. And of course, Minute Maid Park with over 41,000 in Houston. And let me just say, I mean, the vibes have been immaculate here in the city of Albuquerque. The fans have been loud. They have been rowdy. They have loved everything that they've seen across the game last night and what we've gotten through three and a half innings of play today. And shout out the folks running the city of Albuquerque for making thousands upon thousands of these beautiful foam Albuquerque goes bananas hats. One of my favorite things I've seen in my entire life. Same goes for the beautiful mug of Ryan Sexy Mexi Rodriguez. He takes over for Garrett DeClue. 
and is the third party animal to tow the slab tonight. And the Bananas are batting just 111 against Ryan Rodriguez this season. They've only gotten three hits against this righty. Very funky and deceptive out there on the mound, especially because he can turn his entire back to these batters and nail a strike to them. 0-2 count right from the jump from Ryan Cox, who lefty fires that one back to the pride of New Hall, California on the bump. Cox out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania in his third world tour. One for three last night. Bounce to base, knock up the middle his first time. And we'll start his day with a base hit up the middle here. Yeah, now hits in back-to-back -back games for Ryan Cox and across his previous seven games before this series here in Albuquerque, only had one hit and one ball for a sprint. So good to see Coxie's bat going again here in the bottom of this order for the Bananas. Good to see the man Nanas shaking what their mama gave them. Flash represents the inning tying, or the check that, the inning winning run over at first base. Gabe Howell has already been hit once this year by Rodriguez. Howell's been hit four times overall, more than anybody else. He led off the bottom of the first with a fly out to center. Rodriguez, a three-pitch guy. Cut fastball, a slider, and a 12-6 curve. That's the slider there. Two balls and no strikes on the Nanners' third baseman. And what you saw there from Ryan Rodriguez was a little bit of a shortened stretch there trying to quick pitch to Gabe Howell so Malachi Mitchell could not steal. And comes back with a big strike on the outside corner to Gabe Howell. Pitcher's pitch there. Bring the count to two balls in strike. Flash got an insane jump. Ball home will fire it down, but I mean, the ball was barely out of Bronson's hand. By the time the fastest man in Banana Land was sliding into second, that is his 20th steal on the tour, pacing all base runners. Flash, the son of Dennis Mitchell, an Olympic gold medalist for the United States in the mid 90s. This one, squib the other way. It's gonna be grabbed by Baber, who doesn't have a play. Infield single for Howell. Little confusion there between the party animals, first and second baseman. And by the time it dribbled to Baber, Howell had it beat out. Yeah, an unfortunate situation there. Jason Swan knew he was so far off the back, there was no way he was going to be able to get back over there. Ryan Rodriguez, the man who would have to cover first, and figured Dustin Baber had the momentum going towards that bag. It would be better for him to field that ball, but speed of Gabe Howell too much. He's able to reach, and runners on the corners, still no outs. And Bill Leroy looking for a second straight walk up for the Bananas as Gabe Howell will immediately swipe second base. When it comes to the fate of this inning, Howell does not matter. Flash on third base does. Leroy has three inning enders on the year. And is ahead, two balls, no strikes. Another pitcher's pitch on 2-0. Rodriguez not giving in. And serving up cookies and hitters counts. And they continue to get that outside corner of the plate. And you've got to think now with the count 2-2, a ball still to play with. Try and look for that outside corner call once again from Wheeler behind the dish. Bill bounced into a trick play by Acuff at short his first time. The 2-2. Fouled away. Nice front door cutter. We talk a lot about the intensity of Sexy Mexi on the mound. He is locked in, tapped in. You can practically see steam coming off his body as he stares in for the sign from ball home. And Bill Roy not making this an easy plate appearance whatsoever. 
Six pitches between these guys. He continues to battle off a couple from Rodriguez. And pitch number seven incoming. Another 2-2. Swing and a miss. Nice cutter for the strikeout. That is a pretty rare sight right there. Only Leroy's ninth K compared to 11 ball four sprints on the year. Took just a little bit off of that pitch and Bill Leroy couldn't quite get that one. Again on the outside portion of the plate, Rodriguez a step closer to getting out of a tricky situation. But this is out of the frying pan and into the fire. Alexiades, as good a hitter as you can find in Banana Land. He flew out to center his first time. Worked a couple ball four sprints last night. Was one for one, drove in two runs. Walked off the first inning. I mean, the plate discipline we're seeing out of Reese Alexiades lately is insane. Drew two ball four sprints last night. Had three last weekend in Durham, and let's not forget, he also collected a single last night for the Bananas just all around, playing incredibly well from an offensive standpoint at the moment. Fouls this one out of the stadium. So we'll see another 1-2 offering from Rodriguez, who's starting to feel it, shaking those hips on the mound. Bloomer grooving it at third base. The Animals still have the infield in. It is second and third with one out. The inning winning run 90 feet from scoring. And this is going to do the job. Alexiades deep into right center field. Hampton can't track it down. Wouldn't have mattered if he did. Malachi Mitchell could pirouette all the way home. He still hasn't touched home plate. He still hasn't touched home plate. Now he sits on a couch that is on home, so I guess that counts. And in the ballpark of a team whose name was inspired by the Simpsons, we get the Simpsons theme song and everybody trying to find their way onto the couch for the big finale. Good work, Nanners. They take their first lead of the day. They're up two points to one. We'll get it down to Emily Cole for our Bananas Foster family of the day. There are over 400,000 children and teens in foster care across the country without a permanent home. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. This organization is dedicated to celebrating those who are already doing amazing things in the foster care world while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Today, Bananas Foster is celebrating the Alvarado family. The Alvarados have been licensed since 2011. And in the last 13 years, they have welcomed over 100 children into their family. Fans, please help us celebrate the Alvarado families for doing amazing things right here in your community. Always one of the most special moments you could ever have in Banana Land when we celebrate the superheroes making an immense difference in the foster care community. You can just see the youngins fired up down there. It's the Alvarado family that we get to celebrate here in Albuquerque, New Mexico today. Kids are juiced up. Always cool to be in the middle of over 13,000 fans. 
fantastic crowds last night and here today. Over 26,000 fans on hand. And with Andy Archer out for his second inning of relief, we have a very special guest joining us in the broadcast booth. It is UFC legend, Albuquerque's own Holly Holm. How are you? Oh my gosh, so much better now that you're up here. Now for everybody who made the right choice here and started off your Sunday with the pregame show, Holly, you absolutely dominated that pregame dance on the way in with Jake Lee Alias. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta try and live up to what these guys do out here. They're, they, you know, they're, <laughs> they're big entertainers. So I gotta go out there and do it right. That's what this thing is all about. We've got five, six, seven for the animals here in the top of the fifth inning. Acuff, Thomas, and Fisher due to swing it against the big righty for the Nanners, who starts out his second inning of work with his first strikeout. Four pitch mix for Archer. It is four seam, two seam, cut fastballs, and a split changeup. Uses a heater there to pick up the punch out as he sets his sights on Tanner Thomas. Now, Holly, of course, you've you've been a part of plenty of weigh-ins across your UFC and mixed martial arts career. You think in the future now maybe you could schedule a little choreographed dance with your opponent at your next weigh-in? Honestly, I mean, making weight, that's something to celebrate anyway, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so might as well throw a dance in that. Might as well have a good time with it. Yeah, I wrestled for 14 years in my life, and the worst part of it, no doubt is making weight. Oh, it's, it is one of the, it's, it takes some discipline to get there. It takes, it sometimes can be like a little mental battle too, but oh got to get it done. Got to get it done. Yeah, that is, that's the one part of my wrestling career I like to forget. Well, and you guys had to weigh in right before. Correct. We get away in the day before, so there's that. Tanner Thomas with the single there. Yeah, that is, that's a fact. It's usually a morning weigh-in, and then we would get three pounds during the day. And then another way in, you know, within an hour before your wrestling match. Right. And I used to push every ounce in those three pounds that I could gain during the day. Oh, I'm sure. Carbo load o'clock. <laughs> As Noah Fisher will step in, flew out to right his first time. As Thomas is aboard with the one out single. And it's a hot shot into left field. Rack! Gonna backhand that one on a slide and keep Thomas at second base. It is the little things that Robert Anthony Cruz does. He is just always putting on a defensive clinic up out and left. He's getting stronger in left field by the day. That slide instrumental in keeping Tanner Thomas at second base only there. Already has the home run today to the opposite field. And now that play might save a run if Andy Archer is able to shut down Dustin Baber and the on-deck batter Bronson Ballholm. Babe struck out his first time. Now, Holly, you are no stranger to Isotopes Park. I mean, if you're walking in the stairs back here, there's literally a jersey on display with your entire face on that thing. Uh, it's It's got to be pretty cool to get so much love from the hometown team. Gosh, Albuquerque is such a, they're like such a passionate, like fight fan hometown, you know, and so I'm super thankful for the energy here. Albuquerque is great. Uh, a lot of, like, passion here, you know, so uh, I love to be part of anything that comes in that brings positive energy to the state. It's awesome. Yeah, you can feel it with the fans as this one scorched. Cox not able to handle it. Everybody will go station to station as Thomas gets a stop sign at third, and that is three straight well-struck base knocks for the party animals. Six through eight in the order. And to the nine hole we go as Bronson Ballholm looks to keep the merry-go-round is spinning. Justin Baber has been swinging the lumber very well as of late. Was robbed of extra bases. And one of the best plays we've seen all tour by Gabe Howell at third. And now our donut hitter, Bronson Ballholm. So if he strikes out at all today, all 13,000 plus fans on hand will be gifted free donuts courtesy of Duncan. And this place has been unbelievably loud. I think that would generate as good of a roar as we have seen from the crowd. We're not going to get it here. Cruz going back on it. We'll grab it in front of the track. Plenty of room for Thomas to tag from third. So Ballholm will drive in the run. And the Animals with a chance to tie this game in points here in the fifth. Good piece of hitting to the opposite field for Bronson Ballholm. And it's actually his first run batted in that has not come via the ball for sprint this season. 
Yeah, the first eight that the kid from Arizona State had driven in, all via the sprint. Eight stakes on four sprints. But Anibal is an odd sport. As we go to Jason Swan, will be the sixth man to swing it here in the top of the fifth. Now, do you have any baseball or softball playing experience in your life, Holly? Uh, in the backyard with my brothers on the grass is about as far as that goes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple times to the batting cages. So we're probably not going to get an at-bat from you today? Mm, I mean, it, it might be a strikeout or who knows. <laughs> You think you could catch a foul ball for an out? Uh, I think, I, think I can do that. I think I can do that. <laughs> it's probably hard. If it's real high, I'm probably going to have to follow it. I know it's probably harder than it actually seems, but. Yeah, we haven't had one yet across a game and a half here in Albuquerque. We average less than one foul ball caught by a fan per game, so it is a lot trickier than it looks. It is. I mean, just messing around with my brothers, they would hit, you know, they just throw it up real high. And I remember, it's, you can't tell which way it's floating sometimes. We've got a chance here for the fans. And they come up empty. So they catch it, it's an out? Correct. It's got to be clean, no bobbles, no right. deflections. Right. It's got to be obvious. And you can normally tell as soon as ball goes in glove or if it's barehanded, everybody erupts. Right. As you would suspect. I mean, I hope I see one of those today. Why not? As do we. It's the greatest rule out of the 11 in banana ball, in my humble opinion. I like it. So you, you've seen a handful of games here in Isotopes Park. How is the atmosphere down here for this banana ball game for you? Oh, it's amazing. The energy is just, I have some friends that have came. They came last night, they had the best time ever. They're Terrific. coming two nights in a row. And all my friends are texting me, this is the best day. I'm having so much fun. Like, everybody's enjoying it. And anytime you can get positive energy like that, that's a win. That's what we like to hear. The animals were off on that pitch. It's a sprint. Swanee gets into second just ahead of Rack being the seventh and final Bananas defender behind Archer and Leroy, who had to touch the ball before it is live. Jason will pick up a pair of runs driven in as Fisher and Baber both score. And it's a three spot here in the top of the fifth for the bad boys of Banana Land. Reese Hampton drives that one all the way to the left center field wall. That will score Swan from second as Reese cruises in with his tour leading 11th double. And the Animals starting to find some barrels here in the fifth. That's their fourth hit of the inning. Now, Holly, we've got you in the Bananas jersey, but if you had to choose coming into this game, would you be a Bananas, a Party Animals fan, or both? Well, when I first was going to come to the game, I, I think you just hear more of the, the Savannah Bananas. Naturally. I think it's, you know, who, who doesn't want to wear, like, a big yellow banana hat? Right. But I also, I, I'm staying neutral here, you know, because <laughs> I'm actually going to do a little something with the Party Animals, too. Ooh, that's what we call a tease in the business. Okay. Nice. All right. So we'll have something special with Holly Holm and the bad boys of Banana Land coming up. You're going to see it. That one off the elbow guard of Bryson Bloomer, who is an official banana ball magnet. Led last year's tour with 14 hit by pitches, the only guy who was in double digits. And he's plunked for the fourth time this year. That ties him with Gabe Howell for the tour lead. It's a skill being hit by a plethora of pitches like that. I was hit by 14 pitches across 14 games my 10-year-old year of Little League. Really? Yep, hanging in the Saugerties Little League Hall of Fame. Dang. Not many people can say that. No, you might be the only one. <laughs> I might be. I just might be. Jake Skull is the ninth party animal to swing the lumber here in the fifth. They have pushed four runs across, have two men on here with two outs. Scully a strikeout and a sprint so far today. As Archer is trying to stop the bleeding. And it's a three ball, one strike count. That one slapped out to left center field. 
And Rack will turn his Tukas to home plate and chase that thing down. Skulls looking for three bases. The relay from Cox, not in time. Good backup job by Archer. It is Jake Skulls tour leading fourth triple. He drives in his tour leading 32nd and 33rd runs. And the Animals have a sixth spot here in the fifth. And led last year's World Tour with six triples for the party Animals and was able to beat the Bananas who were planning a shift with the ball for sprint incoming rack and Reselexiatis shading in and Jake Skull able to get it over both of their heads. 18th extra base hit of the year. That also is pacing all hitters. There's a reason why the Rangers grabbed him 15th overall in 2010. He's ridiculously talented and couples that with an immense amount of hard work. He continues to get better and better every tour we see him. The party animals have now batted around. And it is a 2-1 count on their cleanup man, Dalton Cornett, who has flown out and grounded out today. Trying to join the party. And a chance for the fans, not caught. Close, but no cigar. This will end the madness. Alexiades grabs the Cornette flyout, but six party animals score. They strand one, and they do it all on five hits and two sprints. The Nanners will need six runs to tie the inning, seven to win it. Party animals clearly look poised to even this game up in the all-important points department, the banana band blasting away. As we will pop it back up into the broadcast booth, we are joined by one of the most legendary guests we have ever had the honor of sharing the booth with. It is UFC legend Holly Holm. And Holly, we've only got you for, for one more half inning. Then we want to get you back to all of your friends and family and everybody here. But we would like to see, at least I would like to see, I don't want to speak for Josh. I, if he can broadcast well in a Holly Holm headlock this inning, do you think that's possible? What do you think the, the best move to put on him would be? I mean, it, with this kind of space, yeah, I, I think, like, it, it's tr a choke. A choke? <laughs> yeah, choke yeah, sounds You, you shouldn't be taking it easy on me either, okay? We, we like a good challenge here, and I'm, I'm up for the test. All right. Are we doing this right now? Yes, we can do it right now. Just All right. So, let me know what position I should get into is, here. It's not really this part, but it's here and here. And I'm trying to get your arteries. Yes, so you, okay. <laughs> he's going to try and get the, the arteries. arteries. Yep. So, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. And this is Josh, can you do you think you're going to be able to broadcast while that's happening? I can try my best. Okay, terrific. You never know. All right, so once the inning starts, and it's going to start right about now, Alex Ziggy Ziegler is balancing a bat on his chin and will now be Impressive. whipping yeah, whipping some bat tricks up to the dish. Zach Blankenship, the fourth man to pitch today for the party animals. He's trying to balance a hat on his chin out on the mound. There's always many things going on in Banana Land. And first pitch swinging, Blankenship off the mound. Throw to first. Just in time, according to Vincent Chapman. Boy, oh boy, I thought Ziggy beat the rap. And there goes the fan challenge. Josh, do you think you could perform the fan challenge analysis while being choked? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, terrific. So Holly will apply the chokehold on Mr. Tolevsky as we take a look. Yeah, he was clearly safe. I mean, this is this is the easiest overturn probably of our entire challenge career. Alex Ziegler was safe by a full wow. step. Yeah, that was, I, don't, I love Vincent Chapman. He's the amazing umpire. I don't know what he was looking at there. Yep, we're overturning it, we're overturning it. There we go. That'll be a swinging bunt, infield single for Alex Ziegler. 
who will be leading the tour in OPS. All right, as Eric Jones Jr. comes up to the dish, Holly, we would like you to choke Josh, Josh Talevsky. Actively? Yes, actively, actively choke him until he taps. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah I'll tap. Say, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Go Terrific. Okay. All right, and Josh, you can take over play by play for the time being. Okay. <laughs> Eric Jones Jr. <laughs> at the plate. <laughs> Josh is a great double play. What do you have to yeah, say about I tapped, it? No, I you tapped, I tapped. <laughs> oh, things are getting cloudy. Things are getting really cloudy, guys. Like nine seconds. I know. I had to like let go. Of she's go she's a professional. <laughs> she's a professional. Why don't you do it? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm prepared. All right. Okay, Holly, you can okay. you can hit me with the choke, and I'll do what I can. Okay. Okay, right. your turn. You're yep. on play by play. Okay. After terrific. the double play. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Holly. Uh, yep. <laughs> Josh, you I might can't have believe faster. I think I did. I almost passed out. I'm seeing things. <laughs> I told you. There's like four things fields down there. <laughs> you couldn't even get a word out. I said Eric Jones Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh. a, I cannot believe people do this for a sport. Oh my gosh. Holly, you're pretty good at that. Uh, we had a trick play miss by Dustin Baber, is what I was saying in my mind is for some reason the words just didn't come out they didn't come out so <laughs> funny when, how that works yeah that is i have been i have been choked by dan obers before so i had a little bit of experience danny hosley deep to left center field and it's warning track power fisher grabs it as he collides with the wall and the party animals win the inning six runs to nothing i yeah i had been choked by dan obers before so I, I'm sure you enjoyed that. I, yeah, and it was a similar experience of, you know, I kind of expect that I should really be able to survive this for like a right. minute maybe, and I don't think I get to double-digit seconds. It gets foggy. It gets foggy. It gets foggy. Yeah, so do you train? Do you train being choked? And like, is that something you work on to try and survive a tap? I mean, you're obviously trying to get out of it because well, you stay in your trouble. I think, I think the trouble. biggest thing is to it, not overly, like, just tap without trying to fight the hands and right. things like that. But, right. um, I mean, also just not to give up on it, you know, not right. to, like, tap too soon, but, yeah. you know. Uh, there was nothing I could have possibly done in my life there except give up on it and tap immediately. Matt Wolf is taking over on the mound for the Bananas. Uh, Holly Holm, we cannot thank you enough for joining us I in the booth. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, thank you very thank much you. for choking both Josh and I. That was a Anytime. thrill. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, we'll follow up. We'll circle back. Yes, yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be training, and uh, maybe maybe next year when we're back in Albuquerque, we, I could possibly get two, three words out while being choked. All right. Well, to be fair, we could start where it's not already, you know. Yeah, that's. Got to be fighting the hands before it gets there. That's a good call. Yeah. Right. Well, next right. year we'll be fighting the hands. All right. <laughs> uh, Holly, once again, thanks so much. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of the day. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Holly Holm, a legend yeah, thank of you very much. Thank you. the UFC, a legend of Albuquerque, and the most vicious choke I've ever experienced in my 27-plus years on this earth. <laughs> I was like, I literally, it was like eight seconds. I thought I was going to pass out. See, I knew you weren't, you weren't giving me enough credit there. You <laughs> had to understand. I had to understand. Well, Holly, you're a superstar. Thanks again. It'll be five, six, seven for the party animals here in the top of the sixth inning. I did not have that on my 2024 bingo card. I don't think I had it on my life bingo card. Get choked out by Holly Oak. Correct. <laughs> Dude, I thought. Your, your throat still feel a little funny. I got to ask you. Everything about me feels funny right now. Whew. I mean, I lost air for like, that was like six or seven I seconds. I still feel like I'm trying to regain some things. I'm woozy. I, I really felt like, I felt just about as disoriented as I've ever been in my life towards the end of that chokehold as Acuff flies out in right center, Hosley covering a good chunk of turf. To pull that away, Chase actually started the sixth run fifth with a strikeout. He's now one for three with a home run on the day. And Tanner Thomas, who truly began the barrel parade in inning ago with a base knock is one for two. 
Sometimes these rallies, they start out innocently enough. And here, with the 1-0 count, Tanner rolls this over to Brandon Crosby. And good cover of the bag from Matt Wolf. And another emphatic out call over at first base from Vincent Chapman. It's just always fun to see him man a different umpiring position. I'm sure all those fans over on the first base side getting a ton of love and getting a ton of laughs from Mr. Chapman as well. Under the leg pitch popped up towards the fans. Not caught for an out. This is the 29th banana ball game of the year. First time that Vincent Chapman has not been behind the plate. Kind of similar to a catcher when you have a day game after a night game. Vincent's already done it a handful of times this year. He'll be able to have a much more relaxing day over at first base than he would be calling balls and strikes as Bryson Wheeler gets to suit up behind the dish for the first time in his banana ball umpiring career as Danny Hosley pulls off his patented hibachi tip drill trick play. Adds a second dribble to that one. And Matt Wolf has himself an easy breezy beautiful one two three top of the six three outs in two minutes and 17 seconds for matt wolf and a pair of trick plays for the bananas right fielder in today's game and he's done it two different ways what a great play by haas let's get it down to the young professor for some grandma gladiators young kathy all right gladiators starting position Ready, fight! Oh, there they go. They are ferocious. Pick up that noodle. Come on, Cal. Oh, she knocked her helmet off. She, they are going for it. They are brutal. The endurance, the stamina, they're taking it all the way down the line. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh my gosh! Sue doesn't love. <laughs> now it's getting serious! Fight, ladies, fight! Here we go! There can be only one! In three, two, one, stop the fight! Stop the fight! Time to pick a winner. Is our winner Sue? Or is it Kathy? Ladies and gentlemen, might be too close to call. Sue! <laughs> Kathy! Your winner is Kathy! Now batting number 17, Brandon. Congratulations to Kathy. She is our champion grandma gladiator this afternoon here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Got ourselves a 2-2 ball game in the all-important points department. Party Animals failed to get a base runner in the top of this inning, so the Bananas just need one run to retake the lead. Animals were up 1-0, then the Bananas jumped ahead 2-1. Party Animals just won the fifth inning, six runs to nil. And it is 8-9-10 and 10 in the order against the fifth Party Animals pitcher, Jake Lialios, takes over on the bump. And by the way, real quick, to just put a bow on Zach Blankenship, that is now five terrific relief appearances in a row for the pride of Fleming Island, Florida. And again, he is working quickly for, for the party animals as well. And here Brandon Crosby thought he had the ball for a sprint, stepped out of the box after it was a called strike. And if I'm not mistaken, that should then be strike three for Crosby. Lealios will throw over to first, Swan on the bag. The umpires are going to say it was just a miscommunication. And now they are going to say Brandon Crosby is out. It's the one thing in banana ball that I don't like. <laughs> and I love almost everything about the sport. In fact, I am in love with it. But the miscommunication, when you've got three balls, and you leave the box thinking you've got yourself a sprint, and then it turns into a caught stealing first base. Is it a caught stealing a first base, or is it technically a strikeout from stepping out of the box is the real question now. 
think that one is a caught stealing of first. We'll have to we'll have to talk to the umpires down there. Well, we think about it. Jake Lealio's dancing on the bump. He brings in Baber, Acuff, and Hampton behind him for a little choreographed dance. Because it could it could go either way, right? It, he breaks out of the box thinking he has himself a sprint. Right over Josh and my heads. We're dying for it. We're dying for it, Josh. One day we'll get a chance to catch a foul ball. And if you have two strikes on you, or if you have a 3-1 pitch, like in that very case, and you take off for first base on a strike call, you can attempt to steal first. That's the that's where it gets hairy, is stepping out of the box backwards. I think since, and this is where I take my point, rest, is I think running towards first base means it was an attempt at stealing first. If he'd stepped out of the box backwards, he would be struck out on stepping out of the box strike play. Sound, sound, sound to you? I can jive with that as Robert Anthony Cruz strikes out on a Jake Lee alias bender, and Jesse Cole comes out to the field. The 10-foot, 9-inch world wonder out of Ellaville, Georgia. Dakota Stilts, all Britain. Pinch hitting for Ryan Cox with two outs and nobody aboard. He represents the inning winning run. Still looking for his first career extra base hit in the banana ball. That ball stroked deep to left field. Wow! It is a stilts barrel. He'll have to be content with a single. That banana ball was tattooed by our lanky legend. First time the big man has faced Jake Lealios this season and rocketed one over the head of Noah Fisher in left field. What a barrel from Stilts. Fish never stood a chance. And the only chance Stilts had at his first career extra base hit is if that thing bounced over the left field wall. Good job by Fish. Limiting the damage to just one base as Flash steals his second base of the afternoon. He's the designated runner for the Bananas, which means he can pinch run one time every time through the order. And the Bananas with Gabe Howell, the leadoff man, up with two down, and now the inning-winning run in scoring position. Beginning their third trip through the lineup. That one dinked out to left center field. Fisher coming in, grabs it on the run. And Lealios holds serve. Stilts made things interesting. With the pride of Tucson, Arizona. Able to strand Flash on second base. And we are still knotted at two points each as we head towards our final three innings of the afternoon. And credit to Jake Lealios' fielders behind him. Great jump by Noah Fisher. Still getting acclimated to left field, making a really important play. Now we go to the video board here in Isotopes Park and we take this thing full screen in virtual banana land. Tapped in and locked in to the Nanners. Incredibly attainable, affloatable, and outstanding thrift, thrift shop journey from a couple days ago. And here are the results. I mean, these guys are rocking some bargain finds. And Zach Phillips at the center of it all on the banana bike is going to take over on the bump. Despite Philly pitching in a different getup in this ball game today, one thing's for certain, it's probably not going to slow down the pace at which he pitches on the mound. 
eight career innings that he has thrown below two minutes in his banana ball career, and he is only getting stronger lately. He's had multiple two or more strikeout appearances for the bananas, and now the party animals have their own entrance scripted here in the start of the seventh. There's our new best friend, Holly Holm. See if she puts a chokehold on Dustin Baber. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a double beer chug. Holly getting Babes fired up. The preacher's daughter gives Babes a little bit more of a slap to the face than he had bargained for. And here comes the dual chug. Babes, a professional Holly home. That was some quick work from the UFC legend as well. And some final words of encouragement for the party animal second baseman. And she'll go over and help Anthony Coromano coach first base. In fact, she'll just take Anthony's job. Baber blasts this one deep to left, and it's the first home run in the career of Derek Ginger. The Holly Home effect is real and alive today in Albuquerque. Finally, the first home run in the banana ball career of Dustin Baber. Amped up as you can be, and it is a beer chug bomb by the second baseman. Holly Home right in the middle of the raucous celebration for the bad boys of Banana Land. Whatever words of encouragement she gave the pride of Babson Park, Florida. It worked. First pitch he sees in the at-bat. And he goes long bombs away for the first time in his two prolific years as a banana baller. And it was a no-doubt smash. And look, this is a guy who's accomplished so much across his time in banana ball. And I'll bet you, if you ask him right after this game, he is going to tell you that this is now his all-time favorite moment across his time playing banana ball. And that is saying a lot is Zach Phillips will bring in Olsen, Cox, and Meadows for a choreographed dance. DR freshly inserted for Alexiades in center. And immediately shaking what he's got. 2-1 count. On the donut hitter, the switch hitting catcher, Bronson Ballholm, who has popped out and last time up had a sacrifice fly. Taps this one past the sliding attempt of Gabe Howell. And it's a one for two afternoon for Ballholm. The L.A. kid aboard runs very well. In fact, can be very surprising for a lot of folks as a catcher. He's been the designated runner for the party animals a handful of times when he is not in the starting lineup. That one all the way to the backstop. Wild pitch from Philly, the former Kansas City Royals minor leaguer. Bad by KC in the 27th round back in 2019. 27th round back in 2019. As this one is not foul. Emerson Elmgren, our first base camera woman, the Iron Horse of BTV, jackknifes out of the way. She has been a ball magnet right up there with Bryson Bloomer as of late and Brett Helton. This one rolled over. Cox is going to try and get the lead runner at third. Not in time. There's the aforementioned speed on display from Ballholm. <laughs> something to third base that words are not allowed to describe. It'll be a fielder's choice. That puts Swanee on first. And men on the corners with nobody out. As the animal's order flips on its head. And the switch hitting center fielder, Reese Hampton, swings it. Not exactly the greatest decision by Ryan Cox, even though the momentum was going towards that third base back. His body lined up in that position. 
Bronson Ballholm's an excellent runner, was streaking towards third base, and it would have made a lot more sense for Coxie to try the throw over to first, as Reese Hampton will be the second party animal to leave the yard against Zach Phillips here in the seventh, before Philly can even record one out the party animals with four runs against him. It was a six run fifth. Now it's a four run seven. It's still no outs. Reese Lightning with his third thunderous blast of the year. We saw Cruz thinking about attempting to rob it, and he ran out of room. And now four home runs in today's contest. Exactly like we predicted, the ball flying out of Isotopes Park today. Bryson Bloomer, rocket to short. Ryan Cox, 360 between the legs. And he will grab his third trick play of the afternoon, 61st of the season. And five batters into the inning, there is finally an out. Jake Skoll behind 0-1. He had a two-run triple his last time up. A sprint and a strikeout before that. That one chopped just foul. We'll do another 2-2 offering. 11 years of minor league baseball experience between the pitcher and hitter here. Let's see what Philly goes to. Tries to front door it. Diving attempt by Brandon Crosby and it deflects over to the third baseman Howell who's on the first base side of second in the skull shift. And Jake continues to rake. Now two for three on the day. Jess continues to put up monster performances day in and day out for the party animals and was ready for the breaking ball and is ready to run on the first pitch to Dalton Cornett, swiping second and will also advance to third as the throw from Bill Roy went into center field. Second steal of the series here in Albuquerque for school. That makes him the first party animal to 10 swiped bags on the tour. And this one on a hop, not handled by Jackson Olsen. Hot shot from Cornette. It will drive in Jake. And now 24 RBIs on the year. The only man with more, the guy who just scored. It'll be shots from Delano and Skoll to celebrate the fifth party animals run of the inning as Skoll oh wins the battle and flip cup nearly lands the table flip that was as close to the table flip as we have seen across the nearly 10 times the animals have tried it this year Skoll the first guy to over rotate it had all been under rotations thus far Josh, the official scoring decision on the Cornet hot shot is that's a pretty easy official scoring decision right there. Chase Acuff now two for four on the day. He homered his first time. Uh, Cornet struck me as a single. I agree. Great minds think alike. Now Tanner Thomas. The ninth party animal to swing it here in the top of the seventh. So far, Bryson Bloomer, the only man to make it out. Philly drops down with the arm angle to steal strike two. That one off the helmet. Tanner clearly woozy. Skull is trying to hold him up. And Dylan Porter hustling out of the dugout with 
a giant roll of bubble wrap. He's trying to keep his extra hitter safe. And much like the younger brother from A Christmas Story, more layers is always the secret to a safe outfit as Thomas collapses on first base with his new enhanced protection. Let's hope that it does not affect Tanner's mobility as much as the layers affected Ralphie's younger brother. Curveball just misses down and in. 1-1 one, one count on Noah Fisher. The party animals have batted around for the second time across the last three innings. That one does scrape the bottom of the zone as Fisher fights off the 1-2 offering. This one bounced to Cox. He goes the short way to second. That's the only chance the party animals had at an out. As now just like in the fifth, the animals have pushed six runs across. Cornette scores. Acuff over to third. Thomas taken off the bases as Fisher reaches on the RBI fielder's choice. And Baber with his second extra base hit of the inning. He started things off with the solo home run. Now he adds an RBI double. And it is a seven spot for the bad boys of Banana Land. And a three hit game for Dustin Baber as well. Had four hits in the game last weekend in Durham. And again, you said it earlier, this guy swinging a red hot bat all of a sudden for the animals at the bottom of this order. He's only seen two pitches in the top of the seventh inning. He has a solo home run and an RBI double. Phillips spikes that one to first, but Crosby able to help him out as the 11th man to swing it. Brunson Ballholm grounds out to end the top of the seventh. And you get another look at the casual between the legs play by Zach Phillips. He will pick up one bright spot on the frame, his third trick play of the year, and now Drew Gillespie coming in with a mini hot air balloon as his backup. The Albuquerque, New Mexico native. Fans fired up to see one of their own taking the mound. Drew last night gave up an unearned run. No hits, just two trick plays missed. He picked up two strikeouts in his two-thirds of an innings pitched. And you look at the numbers on the tour for Gillespie. They rank in the top three in Banana Land. And there is no debating that. It is Gillespie, Delano, and Hosley, and no one's really close to them. And again, he is still leading the 2024 World Tour in average minutes per inning, averaging just two minutes and 57 seconds to get three outs this season. And he has told me that it is a goal this year to stay below three minutes and become the first pitcher in banana ball history to accomplish that feat. Drew out of Sandia High School, named for the enormous Sandia Mountains that overlook Isotope Park. Gillespie then stayed at home for his first three years of college at the University of New Mexico, and the Lobos goes behind the back, grabs a trick play, one pitch, one out. Villaroy with an aggressive approach there, swinging against Gillespie and able to knock it down. And not only that, was in the right state of mind to go behind the back and get a trick play on the year. Third on the season for Drew, who joined the Party Animals about halfway through the 2023 tour. He knocks that one down. No time for a trick as he takes care of DR Meadows. Back-to-back -back comebackers as 
You see Drew scramble after that one. And take care of the Nanners' new center fielder in his first plate appearance of the ball game. Now Danny Oberst. Rounded out to first in the third was pinch hit for by Alex Ziegler in the fifth. Second trip to the dish for the Nanners' designated hitter. Gillespie sneaks the heat by him. So Drew had three years right across the street pitching at UNM and then transferred to Southeastern University where he would help them win a national championship. Behind the back, Reese Hampton. Trick play number 14 and a 1-2-3 inning for Gillespie. Eight pitches for Drew Gillespie and three outs in one minute and 24 seconds. And it comes with two trick plays in the inning as well. That's how you keep that average MPI below three minutes on the season. Party Animals win the seventh, seven runs to nothing, and jump ahead three points to two with two more frames on the docket this afternoon. We salute all the service members, both past and present, among the 13,000 plus here at Isotopes Park, and welcome inside the broadcast booth with Josh Tulevsky, I am Biko Scala. Time to give you a chance to earn a free pair of shoes, courtesy of our friends over at Zappos. you got to hit the link in the description. Put on all the relevant info, and then when it says buzzword, we'll give you that after this drum roll. <laughs> Baber! It is Baber, as in Party Animals second baseman Dustin Baber, who is a triple away from the cycle here on this beautiful Sunday. Having, again, an absolutely monster game and one that you can just see the smile on Dustin Baber's face and I mean we flashed back to that home run that he hit to lead off the seventh against Zach Phillips it was hard to tell whether he was more excited about it or that entire party animals dugout who just absolutely barreled out of there to meet him at home plate yeah that was special stuff right there you can see it at the bottom of your screen B A B. ER for the sophomore here in Banana Land. Dustin Baber kicked off his Banana Ball career in the 2022 Summer Series. Played second base unlike anyone we have ever seen and has been a formidable foe for Ryan Cox in the trick play battle. Baber the second most on the tour is Jason Swan. Waste no time. Zach Phillips second inning of work and after giving up seven runs in the seventh Swanee starts him out with a line drive single here in the eighth. It's an interesting managerial decision to keep Zach Phillips out on the mound after allowing six runs to the party animals, but the Bananas pitched a decent amount of the bullpen last night in their victory. And for Phillips, one of the remaining arms ready to go in this contest. So kind of just in a tricky situation at the moment. And Austin Krasminski, who is slated to pitch the ninth, probably not quite ready to come into this ball game yet, if I had to guess. Reese Hampton blasts a two-run home run in the top of the seventh. Taps this one to Howell, who goes to second for one. Olsen over to first, just in time. 5-4-3, the Nanners go around the horn and get an immense twin killing. Party Animals will challenge the call at first base. We're getting a quick look at it here before we even get the Riedel headsets on. Vincent Chapman has already been overturned once today. Alex Ziegler was originally ruled out, and he was safe by a mile. This one is a lot closer. Look at the play at second. Nothing is wrong with that one. Now we look at the play over at first. And tough to tell on that one. We'll see if we can yank it back a few steps. Okay, we're seeing it again. Everybody a blur. Once again, tough to tell for me. Here we go. Can't really tell anything. With the that. replay angles here, you can't overturn the call on the field here. Call will stand inconclusive. Call is, yep. Impressive turn by the Bananas with one of the fastest men here in the Northern Hemisphere barreling down the 90 feet of the first baseline. Now it'll be Bryson Bloomer.
Quick 3-0 count on the Animals' third baseman. One for three today, a single back in the fourth, and he's trying for his fourth homer of the tour right there. Yeah, again, just trying to swing big and get one over the heads of the Bananas outfielder shading in for the ball for a sprint. Here, pitch number five will sail outside, but Bloomer not going to chance anything with side to stay at first base on the sprint. He grabs sprint number seven on the season, immediately pinch run for by the Animals' designated runner, Jordan Hussein. Jordan five for seven in his stolen base attempts on the season. As Jake Skoll steps in. One and one on the right fielder. Two for three. Two run triple, a single his last time. One run scored today. And back ahead in the count. Thought he was getting the front door slider. Ends up tied up on a heater. Yeah, kind of an uppercut swing there from Jake Skull with that one running in. Trying to protect himself a little bit. Now Phillips goes off speed. This one is heading towards the crowd and the fan with a bobble and could not come up with the catch. And you just heard the groans from the crowd hoping that that one would be caught and bail Zach Phillips out of the eight. We're still looking for our first foul ball caught for an out here in the 505. This one shot out of the stadium. No chance for the fans to make the play on that. Seventh pitch of the plate appearance here. Bender, low outside corner. Phillips gets the call from Bryson Wheeler. Skull disagrees. And Phillips with an excellent bounce back inning to keep the party animals off the board in the top of the eighth. Another look at the strikeout here. Yeah, that's got to be very encouraging for Zach Phillips after you get lit up an inning before you're able to keep the party animals off the board. And he'll try and ride that momentum probably going into his next outing as that probably closes his day. Jesse Cole letting the full capacity crowd here in the Duke City know that it is yellow time. Phone lights to the sky. Here is the clock strikes 2.44 p.m. in Albuquerque. The sun is shining as are the flashlights on the phone. Party Animals lead the ball game three points to two. The Bananas will just need one run in the bottom of the eighth here to knock this game back up at three to three. Phenomenal trip to Albuquerque it has been. The ninth stop on this tour. The 39th city ever to have live banana ball played. And this, the third largest venue in banana ball history. Both crowds have been stupendous. It is a beautiful city, a beautiful venue for banana ball. All of it must make Jesse Cole feel pretty darn special. That's what I thought. You're in the home of the Albuquerque Isotopes, AAA affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Michael Vitamin D. We'll get his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Pinch hitting here in the EH spot for Eric Jones Jr. Bananas hoping the lefty Michael D might have the matchup advantage here against Drew Gillespie, the righty. But so far, the numbers very much in Drew's favor. Deep 0 for 5 this season against Drew. Deep out of Davie, Florida in his fourth world tour. A Notre Dame linebacker, Chicago White Sox minor league baseball player before injuries 
took him out of their farm system, and that is a heck of a play. Uh, the former Tigers and Diamondbacks minor leaguer Reese Hampton robs Deeb of extra base hit, of an extra base hit rather, on a ball that was scolded. A fantastic running grab from Reese Hampton, Manning center field, and this is a very spacious outfield in Isotopes Park. Reese Hampton has played it fantastically over the two games here. Jackson Olsen sends that one into the crowd. Caught by a fan! The grade eight fouls out on a screamer shanked into foul territory off of left field. And it was only a matter of time before one of the largest venues for Banana Ball had a fan come up with the catch to record an out. What a play by the fans, and now 17 fans have caught foul balls for outs on this year's world tour. And what a shot there of the great angle Drew Gillespie had. Albuquerque's own being backed up by his people. Danny Hosley gives this one a good ride, but it tumbles out of the sky into Jake Skull's glove. Here's the young professor. Scoreboard heading into the top of the ninth inning. The score is three points for the party animals, two points for the Savannah Bananas. But here is the thing about the game of banana ball. In this game, in the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means the bananas can hold the party animals off here. Score one run to tie it, or two runs to walk it off for the win. Ladies and gentlemen of Albuquerque, welcome to the final inning! It's time to meet the ring dudes for today. On the party animals dugout, take the alios. On the Bananas dugout, number 21, Jared Donaldson, and number 12, Cowboy Kyle Louie. The ring dudes are letting the folks here in Albuquerque know we have entered our final inning. It's been a fantastic first 17 innings of Banana Ball so far here in the crossroads of the Southwest. Good to see some fans joining Luigs, Donaldson, and Lealios and entering into tarp soft mode as Austin Krasminski will enter on the mound. He has been incredibly strong for the Bananas lately, making appearance number 13 on the World Tour. Has 122 ERA plus, has been above average on tour this season. And across his last six appearances, he has not allowed an earned run to the party animals. Has averaged three outs in three minutes and 21 seconds. And has struck out 12% of the batters he's faced. So, all in all, a good mark for Krem. The Chris Monster comes in for the middle of this animals lineup. It will be four, five, and six. Cornette, Acuff, and Thomas due to swing it. The bad boys look for some insurance. Every run scored in the final inning in Banana Ball counts as a point. Dalton Cornette has launched three balls for home runs so far here on his third world tour. He's got the pop. Give the boys in black and pink a little more breathing room. Krasminski, a three-pitch mix, about 93 to 94 miles an hour with the four-seam fastball, works in... A circle change and a slider to round it out. As the cheese misses down and in. And a 3-1 offering is chopped up the middle. That'll be grabbed by Olsen between the legs. Gutsy time for a trick play. DC3 beats the rap. And unsurprisingly, the Bananas, who still possess a challenge in this game, are going to use it. So we'll take a look at this play, whether DC3 was able to beat it out or not. We slap on the Riedel headsets. That was a good look there. We'll see if we can get it slowed down a pinch. This is the third challenge call this game. They have all been safer out calls by Vincent Chapman at first. So far, he is one for two. Another look. We can't see, we can't the, base. see the foot. There it is. Okay, that's the shot. If we can 
if we can live right here, this shot's terrific. That's a tie goes to the runner, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah. this call stands, guys. This call stands. Cornette just barely able to beat the ball. Good work, Vincent Chapman. He is two for three on the day, defending his honor. A lot of tough calls over at first base in his first opportunity over there on the year. Now Chase Acuff, who had a single in the ninth inning off Danny Hosley last night, and continues to be the best ninth inning hitter we have in Banana Land. Batting 650 in the ninth inning this season for the party animals with a couple extra base hits including a home run now this one chopped to Olsen and he and Ryan Cox are going to be able to amend the trick play miss they turn a crucial double play for Cram 4-6-3 DP started by the great eight the glove magician does the rest as Acuff just barely with a late arrival to first base. Now Tanner, Chicken, Tender, Tender, Tender Thomas. With a 1-1 count on him. One for three, a single hit by a pitch his last time. This one lifted a mile high, shallow right. Olsen doesn't see it. So Hosley will take control of the situation. Here comes the young professor. The party animals still maintain a lead of three points to two. But now, this is a must score situation for the Savannah Bananas. One run will tie it and send it to showdowns two runs to win the whole thing albuquerque new mexico get on your feet because this is it banana nation here in albuquerque we need your energy we need you to be loud and we want to give you some free donuts if you want some donuts from duncan let me hear you scream lined up to face 8, 9, and 10. Crosby, Cruz, and Cox in the Bananas lineup. And these are the moments that Drew Gillespie was made for. Of course, got the three-inning save a weekend ago in Durham, North Carolina for the party animals. Finds himself in a similar situation here today in front of his home city. And it's the beauty of banana ball. Even though the party animals have scored 13 runs in this ball game, it's only meant three points for them and the bananas with two points of their own it's coming down to the final inning and the bananas going to their bench and will have noah bridges lead off against mr gillespie he is two for nine on the tour but a lot of quality at bats that have not led to hits he has been scorching balls straight at party animals defenders all over the field that one he scorches off of himself and even last night was talking about how much he's enjoying pinch hitting for the bananas and feeling more and more comfortable just getting up there and getting one AB a game. The hometown kid on the mound, the pride of Four Oaks, North Carolina at the dish. He pounds another one and once again hits it squarely at a party animals defender. Bridges continues to look excellent at the dish and continues to have horrific luck. But all in all, you live by the barrel, you die by the barrel. 
And now Robert Anthony Cruz looking for another barrel in this game, possibly a second home run against Drew Gillespie. Rack two for nine against Drew on the tour. That one on a couple hops. Acuff handles it. And the Bananas down to their final out. Nice scoop by Swan over at first. Beautiful pick by Jason Swan to save what could have been a bad throw from Chase Acuff as we go down to the young professor. Bananas go to the doctor. Their golden batter here in the 10 hole as they're down to their final out. First time in 2024 that the kid out of Idalia, Georgia has been the golden batter. That one misses a hair below the knees. And this golden batter, not about power, not about trying to get one swing to tie the game, more about getting DR Meadows on base in some capacity and trying to utilize his speed to bring it out around another run. And let Gabe Howell back as Dustin Baber is able to field this chopper up the middle, try and flip it to Chase Acuff, set up to make a throw over to first. But Acuff not quite able to handle it, and that's an infield single for Meadows. The world tour leader in batting average does what he does. He is aboard, and now Gabe Howell, who homered last night, represents the game's winning run. And DR Meadows already looks primed to try and swipe second base here. Bananas have had a lot of success running against Ball home today. 1-1 one, one count on the Nanners third baseman. At the top of the order, he's one for three on the day. The Nanners down to their final strike. Strike three on the outside corner. The hometown kid gets it done. Three scoreless innings of relief for the pride of Albuquerque, Drew Gillespie. And the Animals survive a 3-2 victory and pull back within three games of the Bananas as we head to Mesa, Arizona this coming Thursday. A dominant win from the party Animals late in this game. Two different innings, scoring six runs against the Bananas, and then they turn it over to the guy who has been their best pitcher on the tour this season, Drew Gillespie, to nail things down at the most pivotal moments. Big strike three looking there against Gabe Howell in the state of New Mexico, split between the Bananas and the Bad Boys in black and pink. Animals 13 and 16, the Bananas the inverse. And we'll get it down to Mike Vivesis as he shouts out his team. Let's be your 2024 squad. Starting pitcher Garrett Delano and catcher Bronson Balho. That pitching staff led by Drew Gillespie, Garrett DeClue, Dalton Potts, Brett Helton, Jake Lealios, Ryan Rodriguez, Zach Blankenship, Dylan Porter, Sean Luke, and Big Butter Higgins. And for that infield of Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, Jordan Hussein, Jason Swan, and Bryson Baluma. Our reserve catchers tonight of Taj Porter and Dalton Cornette. The Studley outfield of Jake Skoll, Reese Hampton, Tanner Tinder Thomas, and Noah Fisher. The coaching staff, pitching coach Isaac Hess, hitting coach Anthony Cremato, and myself, head coach Mike Vavasis. Hey, let's jump!
I'll tell you what, these party animals, one over the heart, uh, the plethora of the great folks on hand here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Call it the Drew Gillespie effect. Call it whatever you want. It was a raucous crowd. And from start to finish, last night all the way to today, the party animals faithful was very loud for the boys in black and pink who earn a split of the two game set here in the queue. Welcome up inside the broadcast booth as we wrap this thing up. Josh Tolevsky, Biko Scala. That was an impressive win by the party animals and capped by another unbelievable pitching performance from Gillespie. I'll tell you what, the party animals offense is uber talented and it is really just a matter at this yeah. point of the days in which they are on. Of course, we saw in Gwinnett County in late March, the party animals scored 15 runs against the Savannah Bananas in a game. Then they went to Savannah two weekends later, scored 15 runs again in a single game against the Bananas. Last weekend in Durham had a game in which they scored 14 runs against the Bananas. And here today in Albuquerque, 13 runs scored against the Bananas. And unsurprisingly, the party animals won all four of those contests. And they just continue to be this machine. Mike Vivesis has got the lineup organized in a way in which he likes it. And boy, did the party animals love batting in this ballpark. Had three of the four home runs hit in this ball game. And there were still 11 trick plays in this game. Their pitchers worked quick. And overall, it was a really fun one from start to finish. The beauty of banana ball is that every inning is worth a point until you get to the final inning, which every game on this year has been the ninth and that is when everyone counts for a point so the party animals even though they push 13 runs across still only survived by one point this is a game that they deserve to win and as i mentioned drew gillespie is the band who makes sure that that does indeed happen so now they are once again three games back of the nanners and we head to mesa arizona where we will have ball games in sloan field which is going to be the second largest venue ever in banana ball history that place can pack actually i think it's going to be We'll see if we can get more folks in there than Victory Field in Indianapolis. That is a TBD. I'll talk to the ticketing department. But it's going to be top three. Right now, Isotopes Park gets to live in the top three just for a few more days. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, we will be back on the air, all on YouTube for those broadcasts. And the party animals will need a sweep to leave the Phoenix area as we head to California with this tour tied up. Yeah, and uh, I think that they feel a little momentum going into this game in Arizona now, seeing that the offense was humming today. And overall, it's, it's a matter of seeing if Mesa, Arizona, much like Albuquerque, backs the party animals. We've seen a lot of the time when these banana ball teams are going out west, Vegas, some of the cities in California, now Albuquerque, really love the party animals. And that also includes Peoria, which we saw this year and, of course, in 2023. That's right. So those will be some thrilling games coming up in just four days' time. Uh, before we get to those games, we do have to give away a free pair of shoes, courtesy of our friends over at Zappos. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Jose Padilla, Jose Padilla, congratulations on your free pair of shoes from our pals over at Zappos. And before we shut things down, we do have to call out the cast and crew that makes it happen. Uh, on the first base camera, Emerson Omgren, the Iron Horse of BTV, avoiding banana balls left and right once again. She is a superstar. Same goes for Lex Fowler across the diamond, dominating on the third base camera. On high home, it was Travis Stanhope. Travis, excellent work in your first ever Bananas television broadcast. On the low home, a legend of BTV, Mr. Ben Barks, who was also helped out by Tim Robbins. On the center field camera, William Powell. Great work, William, here on your first BTV weekend. Our utility, Nick Keldy, a.k.a. DJ Squints, also known as Cowboy Kel Diggity, micing up guys all over the place. The fan cam handled by Kevin McManamy. Kevin McManamy, great work getting some really cool shots of one of the largest crowds we have ever seen in banana ball history today. When it comes to the folks two hours in the future across the country in the hostess city of the South, the director of our broadcast, Kylie Sadamka, calling all the shots, and our technical director, Mr. Griffin Ellis, executing on everything when it comes to pressing the right buttons. On the high home, Travis Stanhope. I already said that. 
I already said that. Travis, you're so good, you get two shout-outs. On the replay machine, back on the other side of the country, that would be Keegan Woods killing it, getting a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh shots of all the things we want to see at seven different times. On the audio, Katie Duke handling the ones and the twos. She is terrific at it. The score bug dominated by Kwanzi. One name, you know him, you love him. Fighting the good fight right there. And on the graphics, Julia Massey on the statistics being updated on said graphics, Mikey O'Connor. They are the dynamic duo in Banana Lands graphic lands. Our moderators in the chat, Colbyte underscore and Scott Thompson. Our YouTube king is Zach Bro, and our video legend is the Italian rap scallion, Mr. Chris Sachi. Thank you so much to the coordinating producer of BTV, the straw that stirs the drink, Mr. Chad Reese, as well as our color commentating extraordinaire and statistical savant of banana ball, Josh Talevsky. Biko Scala, everything was coming up party animals today, and everything was coming up Biko on the play-by-play, -play, aside from that chokehold. Yeah, that is a fact. Thank you so much to Holly Holm for joining us in the broadcast booth. Incredible dance with Lealios. Excellent chokeholds on Josh and I in the booth, and then said all the right things to Dustin Baber to kickstart his first banana ball home run. I mean, that is a heck of a banana ball debut for the preacher's daughter. Uh, a big thank you for getting mic'd up down there as well to Andy Archer, Jackson Olson as well. Uh, for executive producers here in BTV, that would be Carrie, Emily, and Jesse Cole, along with Jared Orton. I am Biko Scala saying so long for now. The party animals win it 3-2. to two. They pull within three games of the Nanners, and we will see you on Thursday night from Mesa, Arizona, for the first of three more games between these two squads. Until we see you Thursday night on YouTube, we will see you later!